Hello and welcome to Game On. I'm Simon. I'm Laurie. And two things have made me happen since we last did this. One, uh, I got a very interesting email to my Uplay account from Ubisoft. And secondly, I found out I had a Uplay account, which is about as useful as finding a bunch of old farthings in my wallet. Yeah, but except the fact that farthings are actually still worth something. Hmm, good point. Uh, anyway, the email was from Yanis Malle, the CEO of Ubisoft Montreal, basically apologising for the state of Assassin's Creed Unity upon release, saying... We are working hard to fix the issues with the stability, the performance, the matchmaking, the connectivity, the gameplay and the menus. Isn't that just a game? Well, not all of a game. They didn't mention the colours or the shapes. Hmm, another good point. Uh, but let's not forget, we're only a year removed from all the GTA 5's release problems. You had the Halo Master Chief Collection's the problem. The crew. The crew. Uh, so we're going to answer the question, why are all the games broken? Who are the games they broken? Perfect French. So the obvious answer is that production cycles are too short for how ambitious these games are. Take Assassin's Creed. These projects involve pretty much every studio Ubisoft owns across the globe, and they're essentially always making three of them at once. It's like trying to do the triple jump, except we've got to do all the hopping, skipping and jumping at the same time, which is basically quop. And all this rushing around is because release windows are more inflexible than a carbonite contortionist. Everybody wants to release their blockbuster titles in the run-up to Christmas. The logic being that nobody buys games in the summer because E3 and Gamescom are there, hyping them up about products that are a way off. And people tend to buy less games in the summer anyway because they're outside. No idea why they do that. There's diseases out there. We're hermetically sealed in here. And because these windows don't move, there's simply not enough time to fix the game. These people are professionals. They developed the game. They don't know it's broken like Steve Jobs didn't know about the nets around the Foxconn factory. That's why you get massive day one patches and those mysterious day of release review embargoes. It's not because they think it's finished. It's because they have to finish. It's like they're still typing the code and someone's already boxing up the game. Another weird quirk in this situation is that beta testing has become part of the sales strategy. You pre-order, you get early access, it all builds hype. But this should be part of the testing phase of the game, you know, as in actually testing it and finding out that the matchmaking is worse than grinders, tinders, and not part of the marketing strategy. And because it's a markety thing, the testing doesn't last long enough. Give the public access for as long as they want, and they're not going to want to buy the thing at the end of it, because they've played it to death. So, in short, what they need to do is actually be brave enough to give their developers time to finish the product they're developing, test it, and then release it, because there are unforeseen bugs, and then there's not being able to join a crew in the crew. So it's just going to be driving around the desert on your own, which is what serial killers do.